All right, this is my review of the um, SG003A process meter. And, you know, I don't really do any PLD kind of stuff or anything like that. My interest in this thing is strictly as a current uh, source that's precision and a voltage source that's precision. And, you know, you got to remember a few things about this. Um, one is if you're... Like right now, I'm measuring really low. Uh, I got it set to like 35 microamps, and this will go down to about a microamp. Uh, it won't be exactly one microamp. It'll usually be somewhere like half a microamp um, or so if you set it to one uh, microamp output. But the point is, it's still roughly adjustable in one microamp increments, and it'll go down to one microamp where I have it calibrated right now anyway. Um, which I just went through the standard calibration procedures on it, and it, you know, this is where it ended up. So it actually is, uh, uh, you know, fairly useful. Uh, right now, I'm measuring an unknown, um, you know, infrared um, photo or photo transistor, I believe it is, um, that I have, and I adjusted it. And I'll get this thing set at. Um, you know, you can see what my settings are to where I'm, you know, I got the 24 volt uh, range set just to give me more range for my tests. Um, you know, I still don't know what this damn XMT mode is. That might be useful. I'm just not sure which terminal it works with. Nobody seems to know anything about it on YouTube. If I figure it out, I'll make another video. Um, but anyway, I got this set up, but I'm not using the yellow probe on it because the yellow probe on this meter you know, we'll have a leakage current on that terminal of like 40 to 50 microamps depending on the voltage. <clears throat> so, you know, if you have it like, you know, down to one volt, it'll be like, you know, 39 microamps. And then if you have it at, you know, <clears throat> 22 volts or something, it'll be, you know, just under 50 microamps. So you really can't say that's an impedance. It's more of a leakage current is what it is. Um, cause I tried hooking it up to batteries and things like that to starting to measure the impedance, but you can't because it's different depending on the voltage. I mean, it's the same leakage current depending on the voltage, you know, for different voltages. Um, but anyway, I have this hooked up, you know, for that function, you know, to my uh, oscilloscope here. And you can see it's like 100 samples a second or let's see, what do I, I guess 500 samples a second. I got it at right now. But anyway, that makes a nice roll mode. It's pretty similar to the kind of output this has. So, I mean, you know, if you're measuring less than like a milliamp or half a milliamp or so, don't use this kind of probe because it'll it'll cause serious error in your measurements. Um, and another thing you need to um, understand, well, let me demonstrate this before I go into further, you know, because <laughs> I'm sure you're a little curious. It's an infrared photodiode and... You know, if I hit this, you can see we're flat line right now. You know, but I can hit it with a beam and you can kind of see, you know, as I drift the beam over over it, you can kind of see the response of it. And of course, the remote control, so there's actually a frequency there that you're seeing. Now, I could hit it with a laser diode, like this uh, violet laser diode. And you can see right now it's doing nothing, but... And it'll respond to that because it's a laser diode, so it's, you know, and it seems to respond to all colors. In fact, funny enough, you know, red is actually the one it's less sensitive to, but that's probably because it's a lower output diode. But at any rate, the point is, is that generally speaking, you know, it's still, even if I hold a light over this thing, you know, you can see that it is pretty infrared immune, you know, um, unless you're hitting it with a laser, you know, but it actually responds pretty well. Um... Depending on the lighting, let me turn this thing up here. Um, so, and I'll turn it up and you can see what happens on the scope as I step it up to brighter and brighter levels. You know, see it's actually not responding much at all. Um, when I first started trying to test this thing with using the yellow probe, yeah, it, it actually was responding to this like crazy too because that was throwing it off. So. Um, but you can see here that even with bright light on it, you know, it's still relatively immune, but if I hit it with a remote, you know, that was my, see, that's my, my hand shadow in front of it, you know, as I wave my hand in front of it, but 
um, you know, if I hit it with a remote control, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you can see that, you know, that filter on it actually does a pretty good job, I guess, of blocking visible light. Um, but, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's an all right device. I've been really pulling my hair out about it, and that's what I was going to get into, is that, um, you know, this thing, you know, outside of the probe, you know, having that leakage current in it, um, you know, these things are pretty damn noisy, so, um, you know, they make good little antennas, I think most of these banana plugs do, in fact, this led me on a real expedition trying to find out where all the noise in my instruments are coming from, this is about as low noise as I can get, um, I think this is like 30 millivolts of noise, uh, how I had it set, I, I haven't looked at it since I put this, uh, infrared uh, sensor on it so right now it's about 190 millivolts but that is washed out by the signal itself but yeah it's uh, you know it's it, when you put high impedance on it like if I put it on this resistor decade box and noticed I got really short leads for it uh, to try to minimize that noise um, it will um, the higher the impedance you know the more of a fluctuation you'll see and um i can't pause this video this is like a you know do it or die i could use my other phone and and i could pause it but um i don't know if i can hook this up real quick or not kind of show you what i'm talking about let's see um pause this in this in. Okay. Oops, I'm going backwards, didn't I? No? Okay, um, let's see. Let me get this diode thing out of the way. I guess I'm done, done with that. Um, I'll probably need to hook the probe up to it, though. Okay. Let me hook it up with these clips here. So I got it hooked up to that, alright, you see I got it set to 1K, right? So let's go and let me adjust my voltage per division, so if you can see what it is, see, so down, 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 yeah, I guess I'm backwards, Dang, damn it, um, yeah of course I do, shh, Switch these clips around. Okay. All right. So you can see the kind of noise that's on it, and that's actually pretty tame compared to, you know, what I have seen it at. Um, and I still got the same 35 microamps going through it right now. But you know, you can see. Let's see. See that. Yeah, it's about 11.2 millivolts. So, you know, 10.5, 33 millivolt level. And that's with a 1K um, resistor set in there. So, you know, and, you know, I got it set at 35 microamps. So, yeah, you'd expect, expect it to be in the 30 millivolt range. That's what we're seeing. But, um,. But yeah, like I said, the noise figure in too loud. I mean, it's awful, you know, if you use like regular length test leads. That gets it to, you know, you're lucky if you get it around 100 <laughs> so millivolts of noise peak to peak. But, you know, this thing, like I said, you can, you know, adjust this uh, down incrementally. And, you know, you can see what happens as I continue to push the button. Falling and falling and falling. Um, and we're down to 14 now. It'll take this display a while to catch up. But yeah, it's 14, uh, you know, 13, uh, 12, yeah, about 12 to 13. You know, for 14, that's not bad. And, uh, but I can keep going down. You know, and you'll 
see. Six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, so I got it down to, you know, basically one microamp. You know, that's what I'm setting it at. So, and you can see what the voltage is, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's definitely below one microamp output. And it is if you put it on an ammeter, but man, every time I add these eight meters, it adds still so much more noise. I've just been trying to avoid using either of these. So, um, um, you know, you can minimize it, you know, by taking, um, you know, I really still need to make up some test probes for this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you can take some little clips like this, you know, and put them in there. And, you know, uh, I was going to put a, make something and kind of rig a BNC connector up to it so I can use scope probes. It'll be a little better anyway. Um, so, but yeah. Um, okay, so let me, you know, now that I demonstrated that, let me go up to like, uh, I don't know, five, eh, go up to 10 and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're at 10 uh, microamps right now. Now, we've still got the 1K load resistor on it, right? Now, let me show you something. So let's switch it to 100K. All right, so I switched it to 100K. Now, let me go ahead and adjust the current down because that takes it off the screen. Um, I'll still probably have to adjust my range on this thing. Um, oops, going the wrong way. I don't know why these guys do things backwards in China, but um, you'd expect the higher voltage to be clockwise and the lower to be counterclockwise. But see, you can see where we're at right there right now. Um, and I may end up adjusting this lower, actually, just so it's more obvious, because um, it takes a while. But if you sit here and watch it for a second, you will see a jump right there. And what that is is a PID loop response. You see, this thing will keep it to within about half a microamp or so. Um, but every now and then, it, it realizes its range is out of whack, and it'll adjust. And what you're seeing there is basically half a microamp multiplied by a 100k resistor more or less so you know it actually is performing you know uh like you would expect at first i was getting plagued with this and i couldn't figure out what was causing it but that's what it ends up to be if you work out the math and everything and you look at the actual current variation that's what you're seeing there it's actually a fluctuation of about half a microamp or so it's just this thing adjusting so but it's something to be aware of you know, if you're dealing with higher impedances, and you could take it to one meg, but, and see it even more pronounced, um, let me go ahead and adjust this down to one to compensate for some of that, ooh, what? Okay, no, you're just seeing that, uh, multiplied by a lot more, let's see, okay, now let's watch it for a second. You know, I've got one mega ohm, I've got to set to one microamp of current, but you'll see that same waveform because, but now it's being multiplied, that difference is being multiplied by a million now instead of just, you know, 10,000 or whatever I had a set at before. So, yep, there she is, more pronounced than ever. So, it's something to be aware of, you know, it may freak you out if you're unaware, like it did me at first, but. You know, but it's actually no big deal. So, um, just be aware of it. And it's part, you know, it's actually really remarkable given the fact this is like a digital control device. You know, I was uh, considering building one out of one of those LM334Zs, which is an analog current source that can go down to one microamp. And I might mess with that a little bit uh, at some point just to kind of compare them. But, you know, um, but this isn't bad, you know. Uh, that's it's this kind of thing though using sensors and stuff. This is the reason I bought this thing like I said before I don't know anything about You know about process meters or you know uh, PID logic or PLD controllers or whatever um, But um, Whatever they call them but anyway process meters. I don't know anything about them um, 
but my big interest in this was to be able to profile, you know, have a good, you know, because this has a voltage source in it, which is quite accurate too. You know, you can adjust it down, uh, um, you know, to the millivolt anyway, and I can't do that with any of my power supplies. Um, this one you can adjust by the microamp and, you know, which isn't bad. Uh, I'm mean, by the milliamp, but it's it's not bad. It'll hold that, but that's about the limit of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just anytime you have any kind of sensor, I imagine you know I I foresee using this for thermistors and you know CDS photocells or whatever, just so you can profile the range. Even if you do have a data sheet, which I don't have a data sheet of this, um, you know, even if you buy something off of Amazon, you know, like a photo. Uh, sensor of some kind, you're probably going to have a data sheet with it and probably don't even know what the actual part number is. Even if it says a part number, it probably won't really be that part number. But at any rate, this is a way of just testing the sensor so you can, you know, use a constant current source and do what I'm doing here and basically measuring the voltage off of it. And again, you know, if you're dealing with high enough currents, you know, like around half a milliamp or a milliamp, you could probably use the yellow clip too. But, um, you know, I just can't... Um, you know, use it with this. You can use it uh, if you set the output to constant voltage. And again, it's pretty stable and, you know, um, you know, it doesn't exhibit this curve that I've noticed yet, but that's because uh, its voltage source is, you know, should be lower impedance. You know, a constant current source like this is going to have, theoretically, a pretty high impedance. So, you know, that's where it's coming from. So, anyway, that's, um, you know, if that kind of summarizes this little uh, controller and you know an alternate use for it and this is why I'm interested in it to act like kind of a precision adjustable source um, but I like I said I might consider building some kind of buffer amplifier out of an off amp you know a, um, a follower and see if I can stick that into this so it'll handle that stupid source current and then I probably could do that but I should probably make some kind of a test rig for component con testing anyway to cut down on the noise and anything I could build an amplifier like that into it maybe use it directly but you know that's a, a future project I suppose um, but anyway, any rate just thought I'd give that a little quick review I think it, you know I paid like 70 bucks for this I bought like the cheapest one Amazon had they had you know it's like 70 bucks with tax 73 bucks something like that and I did buy this other one too because I thought this one was maybe defective at first but as it turns out it's not um, but this one actually has worse, you know, I talked about the 40 microamp linkage here. This is like 60 on this one, so it's way worse. Now, first, I thought this was dead because of that. So, um, I'll probably send this one back, but I think this is the keeper. So, anyway, 